So you want to play your favorite games on your Android phone right on your arcade machine? Well, why don't I show you how to do that right now today? Welcome to Arizona's Arcade Heroes. Here we go! Shield agent, this is Nick Fury. Track down any hero you can find. They'll have to battle hundreds of opponents. Some maniac is attempting to destabilize the fabric of reality. I believe in you. Arizona's arcade heroes. Welcome back to Arizona's Arcade Heroes. Thanks for watching the show today, everyone. Now, if you found this video because you're looking to play your favorite Android game right on your arcade, then you've come to the right place. Now, what got me started on this journey? Well, some of you may have been to the arcade and seen how they have an Injustice and also a Marvel Contest of Champions game right in the arcade. So this got me thinking, hmm, maybe I can do this at home in my home arcade. So I did a little bit of research and I found out there's a program called BlueStats that will let you emulate your Android games and play them on your computer. So I figured we're halfway there. If you can play it on your computer, there's got to be a way you can play it on your arcade. Well, it turns out there, it, there actually was. You can get what's called a Microsoft Xbox video encoder and run it from your computer straight to your arcade control deck. So I tested this out and found out that it absolutely did work. But then I thought, hmm, I need to build a cabinet so that I can play this game. Well, it turns out one of my golden tea cabinets took crap on me and quit working, and it wasn't really one that we played a lot anyway, so I decided to transform it into a Marvel Future Fight Android arcade cabinet. So I did document this journey, so I'm going to show you a little bit about how I converted this arcade cabinet for you arcade folks out there and then if you're not an arcade person and you're just curious and you want to see how to play this on your PC I will definitely show you after the fact how to use the software end of things and put it on your PC and play it with a gamepad or controller so without further ado let's jump right into it and check out this process here we go okay guys here is my golden tea clubhouse edition cabinet now apparently the game board busted or something because I tried to hook a new monitor up to this thing and it wouldn't turn on. It's got this nice shelf underneath with the, which I can't open right now but um, it's got an old school computer monitor VGA inside. Now I already have an updated golden tee so we're going to use this as our base but we got to get this monitor out and we have to take out this old school trackball and buttons and speaker. I'll save all that of course but let's get this all out of here. So you can see we got the monitor out and apparently it was the monitor that went out and also the game board so this stuff is pretty much useless so i'm going to take this cabinet and use it as a shell for our marvel future fight cabinet now this thing's perfect because it has a lot of space it's got an empty marquee spot with the leds already in there and a nice little spot right here where we can mount probably a 22 inch lcd monitor and i'm going to cut a piece of MDF board for the control deck right here with half inch MDF board which you can buy at Home Depot and I will cut that with a jigsaw and we'll mount our monitor right here and then we'll go ahead and create a custom bezel around the side and we'll mount all of our equipment underneath on the shelving down below so you guys can see here I've got the bezel already installed with the mounting area to put the monitor and I went ahead and painted that with some high gloss black paint so that it will look nice and finished once we get the monitor in there. And then you can see I've got plenty of room behind to access everything from the monitor from the back side of the cabinet. We're gonna order a custom marquee from Angel Otero at Disability Arcade. Put a shout out to him for the excellent marquee I did get back, which you'll see at the end of the video. But here's our monitor mounted. So it's a 22 inch monitor with HDMI. So we're gonna go ahead and hook that up. And let's get started on the rest of the cabinet, guys. Here we go. All right, guys, so the next thing we're gonna do is make our control deck. So you remember I cut that piece of MDF out. Now, I did find these cool buttons on Amazon. They're a lot bigger than a standard button. Um, you guys can see a standard button right here. 
So they're quite a bit bigger. I thought that would be cool to kind of make it like a Dave and Buster's or, you know, a main event type game. So what I'm going to do is I printed a screenshot of Marvel Future Fight. You can see how we have our controls laid out here. So that's why I thought the big buttons would work for that. And we'll have a joystick over here to move our player. So I did find this sauce cup, which is almost the exact same size as our button. So I'm gonna use that as a template. And I'm gonna use a pencil here. We're gonna pencil out where we want our buttons and drill those out. So let me go ahead and draw those out and I'll show you what I come up with. Okay, so you guys can see I have my holes all drawn on with a dot in the middle for my drill. And then what I'm doing is I'm using a step bit. You guys can see if you drill down with the step bit, you can get the hole just the right size that you need for your button. So now when I put my button in here, it's gonna sit nicely right there where I need it. So with the step bit, always take your time. I'm gonna put a link in the description on where to buy this. You can get these bits at Home Depot for about 20 bucks. But you can see each level it goes down, it makes the hole a little bigger. So you just wanna start small and keep checking to make sure that you get the right size for your button. And then once you're there, you're gonna go down and then you're gonna screw on underneath with your washer to hold the button in place. So I'm gonna get these holes drilled so that we can paint this control deck and put a coat of polyurethane on there. You can also see that I've got my keyboard spot and my mouse spot right here with my joystick right here so we can control hit our buttons here and then a spot for your arm for the mouse right here because this is an android game so we're going to have to use the mouse for some of it so let's get back to work and we'll get back to it here we go okay so we have all of our holes drilled and again guys i can't stress enough don't overdo it on the hole you don't want to go too big you want to go a little bit and then check your hole by putting your button in there and just seeing if it fits and then if it doesn't go a little bigger now I'm using a couple of these small buttons I'm going to use my joystick here and my regular button here for the view change so those are slightly bigger but then after you've drilled your holes just take a sander and just lightly go over everything to smooth it out that way you get rid of all your jagged edges before you paint so I'm going to go ahead and throw a coat of paint on my control deck and I'm going to paint this cabinet and then we'll get back to it. Here we go. All right guys, so a quick update here. We've got our control panel put on. Now I haven't added the buttons or done the wiring, but I want to tell you guys really quick about the graphics. So what I do is I purchase cardstock. It's the same size as regular copy paper. You can get it at Walmart, or you can get it at Office Max, or you can order it on Amazon. It's eight and a half by 11. Now you can see I've attached some graphics already. So you can't do super big graphics because obviously unless you have an extra large printer, eight and a half by 11 is gonna be the total size. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna go and purchase either at Michael's or on Amazon some Mod Podge paper. And then what you do is you put your graphic down and you paint the back side of it. And then when you come over to your arcade, you're gonna go ahead and place the graphic on there and just press it on. It's kind of like Elmer's glue consistency wise, you guys, but it basically attaches the graphic onto the side of the cabinet. Then remember the key is we're gonna paint over it with that polyurethane. So it's gonna have a really thick, glossy coating over the top. So you won't be able to feel the edges of the graphics. It'll just coat over that. I'm gonna do actually probably two or three coats of that on there, but it just allows you to get away from having to spend a couple hundred dollars on graphics online for an arcade. Now, if you wanna do that, that's fine. A lot of people like that. I personally like to customize my own graphics. So what I'm gonna do now, this is gonna be very time consuming, is I'm gonna cut out about, I don't know, anywhere between 75 and 100 Avengers and villains, and I'm gonna place those all over the side of the cabinet. So I'm gonna cut those out, and I'm gonna place them on one at a time. So. Let's get to it and we'll be back. Here we go. All right guys, so what we've got here is our control deck. You see I've got some nice Captain America, some shield graphics. Now I did some graphics over the buttonholes, so what I did was I went through on the backside and I just kind of, you know, just kind of dremeled out the hole with the razor blade so that we can push our buttons through. Obviously our buttons are gonna go way over 
the top of this so like you know they're gonna go way over so I just need a hole to push the bottom stem of it through but I think that came out really nice with the polyurethane you guys can see the shine on it so uh, it's looking pretty good guys so let's get on to the next part I'm gonna show you the cabinet really quick too just so you can see how the graphics came out on there so here we go okay guys so we're gonna go ahead and wire our buttons you guys can see I have all of our buttons screwed into the control deck and I've got them all screwed in on the back with the switches in there. So now we're just gonna do our negative on the top and our positive on the bottom for each button. And we're gonna hook those up to this encoder. So I'm gonna go ahead and wire everything up and then we'll get back to that shortly. Here we go. Guys, so we have our control deck all wired up. You can see I drilled right through the paper with the graphics and I've got our joystick on there it's a nice Sanwa clone and then I've got our nice big buttons here that we'll be doing the wiring on to get them lit up you can see on the back side here everything is wired up positive and negative on each one and how you guys know that works is negative always goes on the bottom positive goes on the top and then you just run it to your encoder here and this is an Xbox encoder that I got from retro Ralph thanks again retro Ralph if you haven't checked out his channel go do that but uh, he's in Arizona here so he hooked me up with a lot of cool stuff this is an Xbox encoder so every single one of these is your X A B Y R B L B R T L T back start analog so I wired that all up and now we need to check on our arcade machine so we're gonna see how the graphics are going here you guys so let's go check it out here we go All right, guys, here it is. I present to you the final product of Marvel Future Fight Android emulated arcade cabinet. I can't even begin to describe to you how long it took me to cut every single one of these characters out of cardstock, then apply with Mod Podge and coat over with polyurethane. You can see I did that individually with each team member on one side with no duplicates. I went ahead and picked characters from the entire MCU. Here's a look at the other side of the cabinet with Captain America on the top and all of the other Avengers. Now I did add these LED strip lights along the trim just to make the cabinet pop. Those can be shut off or turned on and the color changing remote comes with them. They are $5 each at Walmart. So I got two of those for $10. But you guys can see the graphics came out awesome. Now here's a look at the front of the cabinet. You can see along the bottom on the shelf, I put some trailer posters for upcoming releases of Marvel movies with the Marvel Studios logo. There's our LED 60 millimeter buttons with the joystick and the view change button. I also found this LED keyboard fairly inexpensive on Amazon with the Iron Man mouse. You can see Future Fight is running on the screen there. And here's a look at the beautiful marquee that I got from this ability upgrades Angel Otero, fantastic job. And then on the top, I added the Iron Man helmet with LED lights and speakers. This thing also has an amplified sound system with a subwoofer. So if you're gonna play Future Fight, guys, this is the way to do it. But let's take a look at some gameplay. Okay, so I just wanted to show you guys a little bit of gameplay here. So what I'm gonna do is, you can see I use the Iron Man mouse here to kind of navigate the menu. That's why I had to have a control panel with the keyboard and the mouse. But I'm gonna go ahead and go into the story mode here just so you can see how the controls work. Now again, I use this Xbox encoder to get these 60 millimeter buttons, the exact layout as they are on the screen with your hero changes here, your attack buttons, and then this purple button for your view change. And then I went ahead and used this Sanwa joystick, which is high quality. So just wanted to show you a little bit about how it plays. So you can see the first mission is starting up here and I've got Captain America and I'm definitely moving him with the joystick. And then I can change the view to zoom in and then I can also switch heroes with my hero switch button. And then let's just take Iron Man in and I'll show you guys some of the attacks. So again, it just gives this game that arcade feel that you're looking for when you play it because, I mean, it's hard to see on a little screen on your phone or even your pad, but when we put it on this 22-inch monitor with the control panel and the buttons and the joystick, it just makes it really awesome. So I hope you guys find time to do this on your own on a computer, whether it's with Future Fight or any of your favorite Android games. 
It's just an excellent way to present them in arcade style. So I think you guys get the idea with the gameplay here. I'm going to zoom in on just the screen here for just a second so you can see kind of how it looks. But again, there's my view change. Here's my Switch Heroes button. Here's my special attacks. Here's my normal attacks. So this is a fun way to play the game, guys. So. Okay, guys. So this is my desktop here, and this is actually not rocket science to set this up, but a lot of people just aren't aware of it. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up Google, and I'm going to type in BlueStacks. And the first thing, whoops, it helps if you spell blue stacks, right? But you can see it came up anyway. So what you're going to do is click on blue stacks. You're going to go ahead and download blue stacks right here. And it's going to take a little while for it to download, maybe just uh, a few seconds, a few minutes, depending on how fast your computer is. But once you have it downloaded, you're going to go ahead and install that. Now, just be patient, guys. It can take a little bit longer depending on your PC. But basically, after that, you'll have an icon on your desktop that looks like this with blue stacks. So I'm going to go ahead and open up blue stacks. Okay, I have low RAM right now. So if you do run into that problem, you're going to want to clean out your disk and start over. But we're going to go ahead and start with it anyway. So you can see blue stacks is loading up and I'm going to go to a game screen here for you. So this is what it looks like once you're inside of blue stacks. Now what makes this really easy is you're just going to log in with your same Android game store ID that you use on your phone for Google Play. So you can actually go into Google Play and once you're in Google Play you can download the games that you want. So you're just going to go in and obviously for this video we're using Future Fight. So we're going to go to Future Fight and you're going to go ahead and click install and it's going to install that to your PC. Now I already have it installed obviously, so once you have it installed, you can actually go back to where it says My Games, and then you guys can see here's some of the games that I've already got downloaded. So I've got a bunch of cool ones on here that I can play, but I mainly use this for Future Fight. So let's go ahead and load Future Fight up. And you guys can see we've got some of these options on the side here. Now at any time you can click full screen and get rid of these options so you get that beautiful arcade display. Let me turn the sound down a little bit here on this. I don't think we need that so loud. But you guys can see that it's going to load up the game just like it would on your phone. And then once the game gets started, you can see it welcomes me in just like it would on my Android. Um, the most important thing about this game is configuring the controls. Now the reason that we use that Xbox 360 encoder is that if you try to do this with any other encoder, it's not going to recognize the encoder because this game specifically looks for Microsoft keyboard and mouse to control the game. So that's why if we use a Microsoft Xbox 360 encoder, it's going to go ahead and recognize that as our controller. So when you plug in your wires from your buttons and your joysticks into the encoder, you'll see it has just like an Xbox controller, A, B, X, Y, L, B, R, B, L, T, R, T, D-pad, joystick. So you can go ahead and map the buttons any way you want. And to give you an example of that, I'm going to go into where it says game controls here. Um, and then you can see open advanced editor. So now what happens is, is you can see it brings up all of these different options that you can set up. Now part of my screen is cut off because it went full screen, but you guys can see I've got this game pad over here in the lower left, and then I've got my buttons over on the lower right. So you go ahead and position those exactly where you would push the buttons on the game with your finger, and you double click and you map those to your buttons on your Xbox encoder. So you can see I've got it set up with X, B, A, L, T, R, T, R, B, L, 3 down in the lower right. And then on the left side, I've got my gamepad, which you'll configure to the joystick. So it's very simple, guys. You just map the controls any way you want. Now, the only games that you run into a problem with on this, if you're trying to do it um, to a different game, is when you have games where you have to swipe. Um, you can set up a swipe on there, but it's a little bit tricky to do. You might have to play around with that a little bit. But once you have your controls mapped and you save it, 
then you're ready to go ahead and enter the game. And then you can click enter full screen to go right into the game. And then you've got it set up to where you can push the buttons and use the joystick on your control deck. Now you can also just play this game on your keyboard, which is a little tricky with the mouse to move and the buttons, and you can map it that way. Or you can use an Xbox 360 game pad or game stick, and you can map the controls that way. But I went ahead and went the arcade route. So now that you guys know how to do this, please feel free to message me in the comments, or I should say message me on Facebook at Arizona's Arcade Heroes, or you can comment down below in the comment section if you have any questions on how to do this. But I went ahead and went with blue stacks because guys, I know some of you know there's other emulators you can use, but they just don't work the same way. Um, I tried most of them and there was a lot of them that were glitchy and had problems or they didn't load the game up. And there was actually some of them that didn't load at all. So blue stacks to me was the most, had the highest rating and the most um, efficient use. So I went with that one. But guys, it's just a great way, um, you know, to play some of the games you really like to play. And you guys can see if I go home here, you can actually play Golden T 2020 on this and it supports the gamepad. So you can play that Golf King. You can play some of your zombie shooting games. I know some of you guys like Star Wars, Strike Force, DC Legends, Injustice. So it's just a great way to have some different games that you're not used to playing on MAME or with classic arcades or with current consoles. So guys, there it is. If you have any questions on how to set this up, there's a lot of options on the right side on blue stacks that you can play around with and get your control configured up, but just an awesome way to play your Android games right on your computer or on your arcade system. So let's get my final thoughts on this and we'll wrap it up. Here we go. All right guys, so there you have it. I showed you how to set up blue stacks. I also showed you how I took an old junkie cabinet and turned it into something really fun and fancy. So if you have any questions, you can find me on Facebook under Arizona's Arcade Heroes and PM me there. Or you can message me in the comment section and I will do my best to get back to you. But thanks again for watching and please hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. That keeps me motivated to make more videos and as you can see, I'm in my in-home arcade right now with several new machines that I have that I can't wait to show you guys. But again, I really mean it. Thank you for watching. This is Arizona's Arcade Heroes, and I'm out of here. Arizona's Arcade Heroes.